Jimmy lie, Jimmy lie, Jimmy lie, Jimmy lie, Jimmy lie, Jimmy lie, hey, Jimmy lie. Lai Chi in Chinese. Lai Jia Ying, born 8 December 1947, also known as Jimmy Lai, is a Hong Kong entrepreneur and activist. He founded Giordano, an Asian clothing retailer, Next Digital, formerly Next Media, a Hong Kong listed media company, and the popular newspaper Apple Daily. He is one of the main contributors to the pro democracy camp, especially to the Democratic Party. Although he is known as a Hong Kong political figure, he has been a UK national since 1996. Lai is also an art collector. A prominent critic of the Chinese Communist Party, Lai was arrested on 10 August 2020 by the Hong Kong police on charges of violating the territory's new national security law, an action which prompted widespread criticism. Lai was allowed bail on 12 August, but on 3 December, Lai was accused of alleged fraud and his bail was revoked. The court decided to jail Lai until April 2021. This is the first time Lai has been detained. Lai regarded his imprisonment as the pinnacle of his own life. In December 2020, Lai was awarded the Freedom of Press Award by Reporters Without Borders RSF for his role in founding Apple Daily, a news outlet under Lai's pro-democracy leadership that still dares to openly criticize the Chinese regime and which widely covered last year's pro-democracy protests. On 29 December, Lai resigned from his roles with Next Digital as director and chairman of the board. In April 2021, he was sentenced to an additional 14 months in prison for organizing illegal protests. Early Life Lai was born in Canton, Guangzhou, China on 8 December 1947. At the age of 12, he entered Hong Kong as a stowaway on a boat. Upon his arrival, Lai began work as a child laborer in a garment factory for a wage of the equivalent of US$8 per month. Lai is a practicing Catholic. Founding of Giordano Lai's factory work saw him rise to the position of factory manager. In 1975, Lai used his year and bonus on Hong Kong stocks to raise cash, and bought a bankrupt garment factory, Kamitex, where he began producing sweaters. Customers included J.C. Penney, Montgomery Ward, and other U.S. retailers. By rewarding sellers with financial incentives in Hong Kong, he built the chain into an Asia-wide retailer. Giordano was said to have more than 8,000 employees and 2,400 shops in 30 countries. Lai has kept Comitex active as a shell company since he left the garment industry for media and politics in the 1990s. After his arrest under national security law in August 2020, Lai tried to sell his asset in Hong Kong, including the entire floor of Taiping Industrial Center. The current owner of the property is Comitex Knitters Limited. Comitex, along with other private companies controlled by Lai, was reported to be the financial tools for his political activities and donations. Publications Lai pioneered a reader-centric philosophy with paparazzi journalism in Hong Kong based on publications such as USA Today and The Sun. His best-selling Next magazine and Apple Daily newspaper featured a mix of racy tabloid material and news items oriented to the mass market, with plenty of color and graphics that attracts a wide range of readers, some of whom are also critics of Lai and his ideology. Hong Kong Publications, Cications Owing to the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests and massacre, Lai became an advocate of democracy and critic of the People's Republic of China government. He began publishing Next magazine, which combined tabloid sensationalism with hard-hitting political and business reporting. He proceeded to found other magazines, including Sudden Weekly Hu Ran Yi Zhu, Eat and Travel Weekly in Xinan New, Trading Express slash Auto Express Jiao Yi Tong slash Wen Chi Qi Zion and the youth oriented Easy Finder Yi Ben Bian Lai. In 1995, as the Hong Kong handover approached, Lai founded Apple Daily, a newspaper startup that he financed with $100 million of his own money. 
the newspaper's circulation rose to 400,000 copies by 1997, which was the territory's second largest among 60 other newspapers. According to Lai, he aspired to maintain freedom of speech in Hong Kong through Apple Daily. In addition to promoting democracy, Lai's publications often ruffled feathers of fellow Hong Kong tycoons by exposing their personal foibles and relations with local government. In 2003, ahead of the record-breaking pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong during July, the cover of Next magazine featured a photo montage of the territory's embattled chief executive Tung Chi HWA taking a pie in the face. The magazine urged readers to take to the streets while Apple Daily distributed stickers calling for Tung to resign. In 2006, Sudden Weekly and Next magazine ranked first and second in circulation for Hong Kong's magazine market. Apple Daily became the known two newspaper in Hong Kong in 2020. Taiwan Publications La launched Taiwanese editions of Next magazine in 2001 and Apple Daily in 2003, taking on heavily established rivals who made considerable effort to thwart him. Rival publishers pressed advertisers to boycott and distributors not to undertake home delivery. His Taiwan offices were vandalized on numerous occasions. As the publications grew to have the largest readership in their category, the advertising boycotts ended. In October 2006, Lai launched Sharp Daily Shuang Bao in Mandarin, a free daily newspaper targeting Taipei commuters. The company also launched me magazine in Taiwan. In building Taiwan's most popular newspaper, Apple Daily and Magazine, Next Magazine, Lai's racy publications were described as having a great impact on the country's hitherto state media culture. Publication Challenges Lai's publications remained banned in China since their inception. The ban originated from Lai's 1994 newspaper column, where he told Premier of the PRC Lai Peng, seen as a driving force behind the Tiananmen Square crackdown, to drop dead. He also called the Chinese Communist Party a monopoly that charges a premium for lousy service. China's government retaliated against Lai by starting a shutdown of Giordano shops, prompting him to sell out of the company to save it. In addition to having his publications banned in China, Businesses had distanced themselves from placing advertisements in Apple Daily to avoid retaliation from the Chinese government. Lai had frequently faced hostility from the many Beijing-backed tycoons, including attempts to force supplier boycotts of his companies. Major Hong Kong property developers and top companies advertised only in competing publications, not owned by Lai. He also faced a lengthy battle to list on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, which Lai sidestepped through a reverse takeover. He managed to list the company in 1999 by acquiring Paramount Publishing Group in October of that year. Other companies? In 1997, Lai put up the capital for his twin sister, C.Y., to acquire numerous properties in the southern Ontario wine and vacation region of Niagara on the Lake. The Lai's group of companies now owns additional properties in Caledon. Lai remains the owner despite his arrest. During the dot-com boom of the late 1990s, Lai started an internet-based grocery retailer that offered home delivery services at Mart. The business expanded its product scope beyond groceries to include electronics and office supplies, but was shut down after losing between $100 and $150 million. Lai attributed this business failure to overconfidence and a lack of viable business strategy. In 2011, Next Media reportedly sold 70% stake of Next Media subsidiary Colored World Holdings, CWH, incorporated in the British Virgin Islands to some tech ventures as TV, incorporated in the British Virgin Islands, a private company 100% owned by Jimmy Lai. CWH was estimated to have net asset value of U.S. $6.01 million. STV paid USON $100 million in cash for 70% stake of CWH. In 2013, STV paid another U.S. $20 million for the remaining 30% stake of CWH. 
CWH itself had its assets sold in 2011 and ceased operation in 2011. In total, Estevi paid you some $120 million in cash for CWH. On Lies Form 3B Disclosure Form, Estevi is listed as having the same correspondence address as Next Media in Hong Kong. Near the end of 2013, Lies spent approximately US $73 million or NT2 dollars 3 cents billion to purchase a 2% stake tilde 17 million shares in Taiwanese electronics manufacturer HTC. Activities in Myanmar In 2014, leaked documents showed Jimmy Lai paid former U.S. Deputy Defense Secretary and former World Bank President Paul Wolfowitz U.S. $75,000 for his help with projects in Myanmar. Lai also reportedly remitted approximately U.S. $213,000. Political activity in Hong Kong Hong Kong Kong Lai is a longtime champion of the Hong Kong pro-democracy movement. According to Lai, the road to serfdom by Friedrich Hayek inspired him to fight for freedom. His advocacy had been expressed through his business ventures such as distributing Giordano t-shirts with portraits of student leaders. His high-profile support for the pro-democracy movements came under strong condemnation from the Chinese government. As the proprietor of one of few that journals that has remained staunchly supportive of the pro-democracy cause, challenging Chinese Communist Party rule, Lai is considered an anti-China troublemaker. On 13 December 2014, Lai was one of the pro-democracy leaders arrested during the clearance of the Admiralty protest site of the Umbrella Movement. On the following day, Lai announced he would step down as head of Next Media to spend more time with his family and further pursue his personal interests. Lai had been the target of hostile attacks and disturbances, including the leaving of Meshedis, axes and threatening messages in his driveway. He had been rammed by a car and his home was firebombed several times, most recently in 2019. Next Media spokesman Mark Simon condemned these attacks and stated, This is a continual effort to intimidate the press in Hong Kong. This is raw and pure intimidation. Some activists felt that the Hong Kong police force and the Hong Kong government, which have been Chinese-controlled since the handover in 1997, did not always follow up on these misconducts against Lai and that culprits are rarely found. During the early hours of 12 January 2015, two masked men hurled petrol bombs at Lai's home on Kadori Avenue in Kowloon Tong. At the same time, a petrol bomb was thrown at the next media headquarters in Siung Quano Industrial Estate. The fires were extinguished by security guards. The perpetrators fled and two cars used in the attacks were found torched in Shek Kip May, and Chung Shawin. The crimes were denounced as an attack on press freedom. Between July and November 2019, Lai was able to meet with U.S. Vice President Mike Pence and later with U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to discuss the Hong Kong protests. Pelosi published a photograph of herself, Lai, along with Martin Lee and Janet Pang, and supporting words to the Hong Kong protesters. Lai also later met with then-U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton. Bloomer reporter Nicholas Wadham tweeted that the meeting was meant to send a signal to Beijing, as it was very unusual for non-governmental visitors to get this kind of access. On 28 February 2020, Lai was arrested for illegal assembly during his attendance in the 2019-2020 Hong Kong protests, and for allegedly intimidating an Oriental Daily reporter after the reporter took photos of him in 2017. His case was scheduled to be heard at Eastern Law Court on 5 May. On 18 April 2020, according to a police statement, his arrest was based on suspicion of organizing, publicizing, or taking part in several unauthorized assemblies between August and October 2019. On 3 September 2020, Lai was found not guilty of the Oriental Daily criminal intimidation charge. On December 2020, BBC News interviewed him when he was temporarily out on bail and continuing his activism from Apple Daily Newsroom. Lai tearfully admitted his fear for his family as he continues his activism.
He stated that if he ended up in jail, then he was living his life meaningfully. Lai stated that if the government can induce fear in you, that's the easiest way to control you, adding how it was the most cheapest and most effective way to control people. National Security Law and Arrests On 30 June 2020, the Hong Kong National Security Law was enacted by China's parliament by passing the Legislative Council of Hong Kong. Before the law was enacted, Lai called it a death knell for Hong Kong and alleged that it would destroy the territory's rule of law. On 10 August 2020, Lai was arrested at his home for alleged collusion with foreign forces a crime under the new national security law as well as fraud. Other next digital staff were also arrested and police searched the home of both Lai and his son. Later in the morning, approximately 200 Hong Kong police officers raided the offices of Apple Daily in Tsung Quano Industrial Estate, seizing around 25 boxes of materials. HSBC took the step to freeze his bank account. After Lai was arrested, the stock price of Next Digital rose as high as 331 percent on 11 August. Bail was set at HK $300,000 approx, US $38,705, with a surety of HK $200,000 approx, US $25,803. Apple Daily said that more than 500,000 copies of its subsequent day's paper were printed, five times the usual number. The front page of Apple Daily showed an image of Lai in handcuffs with the headline, Apple Daily Must Fight On. The Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office, an agency of mainland China, welcomed the arrest and called for Lai to be severely punished. The Hong Kong Journalists Association described the raid as horrendous and unprecedented in Hong Kong. The Democratic Party accused the government of trying to create a chilling effect in the Hong Kong media industry. Former Governor Chris Patton called the events the most outrageous assault yet on Hong Kong's press. The head of the University of Hong Kong Journalism Department called the raid an outrageous, shameful attack on press freedom. Other pro-democracy figures were arrested for national security crimes on the same day, including Agnes Chow, Wilson Lai, Andy Lai, and at least four others. On 2 December 2020, Lai reported to the police station as part of his bail condition for his August arrest related to ongoing national security law violation, but was immediately arrested by police for alleged fraud, in that he and two Next Digital executives allegedly violated lease terms for Next Digital office space. Police referred to a further investigation into possible national security law violation against one of the three, apparently referring to Lai. The case was adjourned until April 2021, with Lai being denied bail. On 11 December 2020, Lai became the first high-profile figure to be charged under the new national security law for allegedly conspiring and colluding with foreign forces to endanger national security. The main evidence for those charges, according to the prosecutors, consisted of statements that Lai had made on Twitter. On 23 December 2020, Lai was granted bail by the High Court with the following conditions HK $10 million deposit, H. Cone $100,000 deposit by each of his three guarantors to remain at his home at all times, except when reporting to police or attending court hearings de facto house arrest, surrender all. Tr On 31 December 2020, the Court of Final Appeal ordered him back to prison after the Department of Justice. Under prosecutor Anthony Chow Tin Hang, appealed his release on bail. On 9 February 2021, Hong Kong's top court denied his bail. A new bail application by Lai was rejected on 19 February. On 16 February, Lai was arrested while in prison for alleged violations of the national security law, including a charge of aiding activist Andy Lai in his ill fated attempt to escape to Taiwan with 11 others in August 2020. On 1 April 2021, he was convicted on a separate case over unlawful assembly during the 2019 protests along six other activists and politicians. On 16 April 2021, he was sentenced to 14 months in prison for the unauthorized assembly charge.
as the sentencing was carried out friends and family shouted stand strong and other words of support in may 2021 lies assets were all frozen by the hong kong government including all the shares of next digital limited and the property and local bank accounts of three companies owned by him on 28 may 2021 Lai was sentenced to additional 14 months imprisonment over his role in an unauthorized assembly in 2019. He must now serve 20 months in prison. On 9 December 2021, whilst serving his 21 April 2021 sentence, Lai and two others were convicted for their roles in the Ban Tan and Man Candlelight Vigil in Hong Kong. Lai, together with Chow Hang Tung, a vice chairperson of the now defunct vigil organizer the Hong Kong Alliance in support of patriotic democratic movements of China. And on 13 December 2021, Lai was sentenced to additional 13 months imprisonment over his role in the banned vigil. Fraud Case In 2022, prosecutors charged Lai and former employee Wan Huai Kyung with fraud accusing them of illegally subleasing the office space of Apple Daily to Deco Consultants Limited, a firm that provided secretarial and insurance services to many of Lai's own companies and properties and was managed by his right-hand man, Mark Simon. In a search of the Apple Daily headquarters in August 2020, Hong Kong police seized financial records, meeting minutes and correspondence suggesting that Deco had been operating at the premise. The prosecution stated that Apple Daily had a previous breach in 1999, also involving subleasing to a related marketing firm, and that its arrangement with Deco allowed Apple Daily to earn at least H. Cone dollar now. Since the landlord never received any application for Deco from Apple Daily. Art Collection Lai is also known as an art collector, especially known for a collection of artist while well Ting's pieces. Ting created around 4,000 pieces throughout his lifetime, and 1,000 of these are in Lai's collection. They were friends since the 1980s, and Lai had been a supporter for Ting financially and emotionally. There are many works by Ting in the headquarters of Next Digital in Hong Kong and in Taiwan. Awards In June 2021, Lai received the 2021 Gwen Phil Press Freedom Award from the Committee to Protect Journalists, and in December that year, together with the staff of Shuttered Apple Daily, the Golden Pen of Freedom Award from the World Association of Newspapers and News Publishers. Sebastian Lai received the latter award on behalf of his incarcerated father.